Sister Grassley, on behalf of my grandchildren and the hundreds of thousands of other great young people that we have in the church that you have led so faithfully and so in, with such inspiration, we thank you from the bottoms of our hearts. Thank you. On April 6th of 1830 is a significant date for Latter-day Saints. It is the day the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints was organized. The translation of the pr and the printing of the Book of Mormon had been completed. The priesthood had been restored. And now the Lord directed that His Church should sh again be organized here on the earth. Prospective members of the Church gathered at the home of Peter Whitmer Sr. in Fayette, New York for this special occasion. The meeting was simple. Joseph Smith, then 24 years of age, called the group to order and designated five associates to join with him in satisfying New York's legal requirements for the incorporation of a religious society. After kneeling in solemn prayer, Joseph Smith proposed that he and Oliver Cowdery be called as teachers and spiritual advisors to the newly organized church. Everyone raised their right arm to the square, and the pattern of sustaining church leadership was established. At that meeting, the revelation contained in the 21st section of the Doctrine and Covenants was received. In that revelation, the Lord said to the prophet Joseph Smith, Behold, there shall be a record kept among you, and in it thou shalt be called a seer, a translator, a prophet, an apostle of Jesus Christ, an elder of the Church through the will of God the Father, and the grace of your Lord Jesus Christ, being inspired of the Holy Ghost to lay the foundation thereof and to build it up unto a most holy faith. Today we have had the opportunity of raising our right arm to the square and sustaining Howard W. Hunter as our president. This is a historic occasion as well as an opportunity to contemplate the blessing it is to have a prophet of God to lead us. I believe we should pause at the conclusion of this memorable session to remember what it means to sustain a president of the Church as a seer and a prophet. First, the title of seer. Moses, Samuel, Isaiah, Ezekiel, and many others were seers. They were seers because they were blessed with a clearer vision of divine glory and power than other mortals. Perhaps the best description we have of a seer is in the Book of Mormon, when Ammon finds the land of Lehi-Nephi. There was much rejoicing in the land at the arrival of Ammon. King Limhi addressed the people and called on Ammon to rehearse what had happened to their brethren since they had been separated. Then King Limhi sent his people to their homes and requested that the plates containing the record of his people from the time they had left Zarahemla be brought before Ammon that he might read them. As soon as Ammon had read the record, the king inquired of him if he could interpret languages of other records he had in his possession. Ammon told, Ammon told him that he could not. Then Ammon said, I can assuredly tell thee, O king, of a man who can translate the record, for he has wherewith that he can look and translate all records that are of an ancient date, and it is a gift from God. And the king said that a seer is greater than a prophet. And Ammon said that a seer is a revelator and a prophet also. And a gift which is greater can no man have except he should possess the power of God, which no man can. Yet a man may have great power given him from God. But a seer can know of things which are past and also of things which are to come and by them shall all things be revealed, or rather shall secret things be made manifest, and th hidden things shall come to light, and things which are not known shall be made known by them, 
and also things shall be made known by them which otherwise could not be known. What does it mean to be a prophet? The word prophet in the Greek language means inspired teacher. In Hebrew, the word prophet means one who announces or brings a message from God. According to John A. Widso, a prophet is a teacher. That is the essential meaning of the word. He teaches the body of truth, the gospel revealed by the Lord to man, and under inspiration explains it to the understanding of the people. He is an expounder of truth. Moreover, he shows that the way to human happiness is through, through obedience to God's laws. He calls to repentance those who have wandered away from the truth. He becomes a warrior for the consummation of the Lord's purposes with respect to the human family. The purpose of his life is to uphold the Lord's plan of salvation. All this he does by close communication with the Lord until he is full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. While my father attended LDS High School, he worked and lived in the home of the prophet Joseph F. Smith. He wrote in his life history of President Smith, great, most great men I have known have been deflated by in, intimate contact. Not so with the prophet Joseph F. Smith. Each common everyday act added greatness, added inches to his greatness. To me, he was a prophet, even while washing his hands or untying his shoes. My father tells of one experience in which the prophet taught him a practical lesson late one night as he entered the beehive house, again quoting from my father's life history. I walked with guarded steps through the office, then into the private study, to the door of the foot of the steps that led to my bedroom. But the door would not open. I pushed and pushed to no avail. Finally, I gave up and went back to a rug I had noticed in the hall with the intention of sleeping there until morning. In the darkness, I bumped against another partially open door. The collision awakened the prophet. He turned on the light and, seeing who it was, came down the stairway and inquired of my difficulty. The door is locked that leads to my room, I explained. He went to the door and pulled instead of pushed, and the door opened. <laughs> Had he been disturbed by my foolish blunder, I would not have been surprised, for I had robbed him of a precious night's sleep by a thoughtless act. He only smiled and stopped to inquire of a strange stable boy what I had stumbled into. I pointed to the half-open door at the end of the hall. Let me show you something. He took time at midnight to explain. When in the dark, never go groping with hands parted and not stretched. That permits doors to get by your guard and hit you. Keep your arms in front, but your fingers, your hands together. Then you'll feel with your hands and not your head. I thanked him and moved to my quarters. He waited until I reached the rear stairway, and then he retired. Isn't a prophet someone who teaches us to open doors we could not open ourselves? Doors to greater light and truth. Isn't a prophet like a pair of hands clasped together in front of the body of the church, helping members navigate through the dark corridors of the world? Isn't a prophet someone who watches and waits for us patiently while we get to where we need to be? Never has there been a time in the written and spoken word can, in the written and spoken word can descend upon us from so many different sources. Through the media we find analysts analyzing analysts, almost overwhelming us with opinions and divergent views. What a comfort it is to know that the Lord keeps a channel of communication open to his children through a prophet. What a blessing it is to know 
that we have a voice we can trust to declare the will of the Lord. As the prophet Amos taught, Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. The Lord surely understood the need to keep his doctrines pure and to trust its interpretation to only one source. Of course, we are all admonished to study and to gain as much knowledge as we can possibly obtain in this life. We are encouraged to discuss and exchange ideas one with another to further our understanding. However, the Lord has only one source for the declaration of His basic, fundamental doctrines. Even as general authorities of the Church, we are instructed in order to preserve uniformity of doctrine and policy interpretation, you are asked to refer to the Office of the First Presidency for consideration any doctrinal or policy questions which are not clearly defined in the scriptures or in the general handbook of instruction. In this way, conflict and confusion and differing opinions are eliminated. President Brigham Young has assured us that we can have complete confidence in the prophets. He said, The Lord Almighty leads His Church, and He will never suffer you to be led astray if you are found doing your duty. You may go home and sleep as sweetly as a babe in its mother's arms as to any danger that your leaders will lead you astray. For if they should try to do so, the Lord would quickly sweep them from the earth. Your leaders are trying to live their religion so far as they are capable of doing so. Today, by sustaining a new prophet, we have placed ourselves under solemn covenant to heed his voice. As the Lord designated Howard W. Hunter as our prophet, seer, and revelator, an illustration of the spirit of President Hunter occurred at the conclusion of the regional conference at BYU's Marriott Center as he was exiting the building through the West Tunnel. It was the period when he had just begun to stand again and use his walker, and he was still a little unsteady. My son Lee and three of his children had attended the conference, and they were exiting through the Marriott Center through the West Tunnel. As Lee and his children moved up the tunnel, his son Justin, who was wandering more left and right than in a straight line, drew dangerously close to President Hunter. Lee cautioned Justin, Don't get in President Hunter's way. President Hunter stopped only for a moment, turned his head around, smiled, and with a twinkle in his eye said, Nothing gets in my way. <laughs> How typical of President Hunter! His life story is filled with accounts of determination, accomplishment, faith, and true Christian love. He is an inspiration to all of us. He is our prophet. We sit at His feet, ready to feast on the wisdom of this true and faithful servant leader. We stand ready to heed His voice because we know He speaks for the Lord. May God bless us. We may follow him who has been called to be our prophet, seer, and revelator. I give witness that divine intervention has preserved and prepared President Hunter for this great and important responsibility. He is the Lord's servant. Of this I testify in the name of him whose church this is, even our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.